The Fallout TV series, the greatest conflict of our time. So we got a touch of drama here in the Fallout community, and it's an interesting one because it stems from three arguments that I've seen really start to build up since 2015 after the release of Fallout 4, where people looked at Fallout 4 and said, hey, this is good, but with the voice protagonist and the shoot and loot style gameplay, this is not the direction we want the series to go in. How about we do what this True. game over here did, which is Fallout New Vegas, which focused more on role playing, choices, questing, factions, less shooty looty, more unique style loot, that kind of thing. New Vegas was always... I agree with this. I have not heard this argument before, but I think the vast majority of people agree with this. Fallout 4 was not necessarily a bad game even, but there is a reason why it spawned the meme of yes, angry yes, no, angry no, and similar type of dialogue options. Because Fallout 4 in so many ways failed to capture your choices as choices that matters, and give players actual freedom and consequences. New Vegas gave people so much role-playing. And obviously, well, in a Fallout game, role-play is what you want. Your choices mattering is what you want. And that's why Fallout New Vegas was so loved. Because your choices mattered. The factions made sense. In Fallout 4, every faction is kind of completely stupid. In Fallout New Vegas, you like the factions. The factions did make sense in what they wanted to achieve. In Fallout 4, what does the Institute want? It's the creepy boogeyman that no one knows even exists. Uh, what do you do? Proclaim to the whole commonwealth that you exist. Genius. What a strategy. Pure genius. In any case, yeah. And the direction that Fallout has went with, you know, Fallout 4, and then Fallout 76, rest in, rest in piss, honestly. You know, it is clear that people want choice. They want their choices to matter. They want roleplay. And with especially the release of Starfield, where the roleplay is literally non-existent, and almost every character with a name is, well, all characters with a name are unkillable, and where you don't have a choice at all in almost any decision that you make, and no decision you make even remotely matters, it is pretty clear that going the route of, you know, not having choices and not ha uh, having consequences for your actions is the wrong choice. A beloved game, but from that point moving forward, I think some revisionist history was really kind to the game, forgetting some of its core flaws and really just celebrating it as the direction that many open world games should go in, but particularly Fallout has to go in. And from that point moving forward, as someone who's been making Fallout content since 2013, a lot of arguments have cropped up three in particular that people have been really hammering home with the finale of the fallout tv show now we're going to get into all of that of course spoiler warning we're not only going to ruin the fallout tv show here for you but also fallout 4's ending fallout new vegas we're going to talk about all of that so if you haven't seen the show you haven't played those games watch at your own risk because i am going to spoil everything here got that good all right okay. let's get into it Starting off with what those three arguments are that I've seen since really 2015 after the release of Fallout 4. These three arguments, mind you, fall under an umbrella that's simply labeled Bethesda hates Obsidian. Bethesda hates New Vegas. Bethes that sounds true. Again, Todd Howard is a very spiteful man who is completely ego-driven. And you know that because, um, yeah, uh, he puts his name on everything as the producer, the creator, the every, he, he literally makes every game, okay? And we know that this is true, that he actually has an imp a huge impact on every game made because everything needs to go through him in a lot of situations. So, yeah, the fact that Todd Howard, the previous owner of Bethesda, the head honcho, the head cheese, the big guy constantly lived in the shadow of a game they gave to Obsidian to make and is wildly without any problems at all considered the best Fallout game by a mile, yeah, he's probably pretty pissed about the fact that the best Bethesda Fallout game was not made by Bethesda and he could not even put his name on it properly. Yeah, yeah. I assume, uh, I assume Todd Howard does not like uh, Fallout New Vegas. As it is jealous of New Vegas, Todd Howard is jealous of New Vegas. All of these arguments fall under this umbrella 
Here's why. Number one, Obsidian is not getting the Metacritic score bonus for Fallout New Vegas because they missed by a single point, something that Fergus Urquhart, CEO of Obsidian, has spoken about in the past and said, it's not a big deal at all. Water under the bridge, if anything. And number two is that Obsidian got one single chance at a Fallout game in 2010 and too many created something far better than what Bethesda has done, as well as being true to the originals. So Bethesda is clearly jealous of this and does not want to have Obsidian ruin their franchise by continuing to out. Uh, yeah. Dude, if I did a thing and I let someone else do the thing for me and they made it better and everyone was commenting how much better that thing is than my thing, uh, yeah, I would also not let them do that thing again because I would be jealous. And I am a... And I am a person who absolutely takes no pride in almost anything. So, yeah, even I would make that choice. It's not a hard choice to make. Do them. And number three is we don't have Fallout New Vegas 2 yet, despite popular demand for one, suggesting that Bethesda is either extremely protective of Fallout as an IP, even though they're the ones who bought it, it's not originally theirs, or they're afraid to get outdone. So yes, at the end of the Fallout TV show, we see the New Vegas Strip. It's destroyed. It's not active. It's not thriving like we originally thought it may be. We but there is still evolved there. We also see the fall of Shady Sands, followed by a nuke, and many people think that the retcons are in. And Bethesda. Also, uh, you know what doesn't make sense? Again, there are a lot of people that initially, when this series came out, you know, my video got exactly 50% liked dislike ratio. Because the Fallout shills that just call this the best, the best show ever made, and then they can't even answer a single thing about the show, nor they can even explain anything of what they liked about the show, except, oh, they had Easter eggs. Bro, the average person doesn't notice Easter eggs, okay? And the average person misses like 90% of the Easter eggs. So, yeah, that's that. If, if that's why you like the show, I, I have so many questions about your existence. And are you on government support? That's that's first of all. But now the shills are drying off because with every video that I talk about, uh, the Fallout TV show, which again is a five out of ten, the shills are becoming less and less active. You know, every video just 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 gets more likes, and now the last one is on eighty some eighty five ish or more percent likes to dislikes. So. That's good. Again, the shills are gonna dry up. The hardcore but there's the fanboys that are gonna do literally anything that Todd Howard says them to, they're gonna lose steam. The same way that it happened with Starfield. Oh no, it's the best game ever! Look at their sandwich physics! Where are they now? They don't exist because they were lies to begin with. If you like the show, that's fine. Again, I have talked about it. There are things that you can like about the show easy peasy. But it's the but the fact that it's a ten out of ten the best show ever and you have no idea what even happened there. <laughs> uh get a life. That is well, quite literally nuking the lore. I'll talk about what I think are misconceptions between retcons that are actually happening, and I'll point all of those out from the TV show versus you know story. Again, it's. I, I still have not seen a single defender of the Fallout TV show even remotely try and address the absolute giga retcon of the Brotherhood of Steel. How they're just stupid, scared losers that don't even respect each other. And what happened to the goals. I have not even seen anyone who says the show is good even try to address that. They all just pretend that that never happened. Stories that aren't done yet or stories building upon stories that already existed. Basically, what's happening right now with New Vegas fans, and I gotta say, I'm really shocked to see this, but what's happening with New Vegas fans is what I, as a Bethesda fan, if you will, and I, I just love all Fallout. I don't think we need this dividing line, but many people like to do that dividing line and exist because of fans like that from New Vegas who have this elitist approach, this gatekeeper approach, when I, I really think every entry, yes, including 76, does something special with Fallout, does something- The hell does 76 do special? <laughs> fail unique with fallout that makes it a particular flavor point being is after 2015 bethesda fans like myself got hit with a smackdown pretty hard they were like no see 
you didn't get it all this time we told you new vegas was the one and you're an idiot and you liked fallout 3 you hyped up fallout 4 and look what happened now you ruined the franchise trust me i say this because i have dealt with this for so long in my career that i'm the reason fallout is, has gone the way it's gone i i wish i was that important i'd love to work on the series someday don't get me wrong but uh unfortunately i don't have that sway and so now for the first time in almost a decade new vegas fans are on the receiving end of that where i see people like on reddit posting things such as hey fallout 4 is a great time if you don't have a new vegas fan breathing in your ear on how bad of a game it is and i just gotta say in general I, I can't stand the us versus them mentality I, I would love for us all to come together I think this is complete fake by the way this sounds completely made up this sounds that people are just creating a side that doesn't really exist because people have played all the fallout games and new vegas is the best one of them I'm no new vegas purist by the way I like new vegas and I will say it's the best one in the franchise but I mean that's it that's where it stops. I I mean I mean yeah, New Vegas is the best one. I I don't know if these Fallout New Vegas elitists actually exist. I think they ju they're just made up. Yeah, there. But I don't know what the chances of that are happening are. So that's the general breakdown of what the argument is online, where it's coming from, and for how long it's been growing. Am I a Fallout New Vegas Elitist because I think it's the best game in the series, by the way? Uh, question mark? I'm not sure. Maybe I am. Maybe that automatically... <laughs> Imagine that automatically made you an Elitist. Oh, you like New Vegas? How dare you? Okay, dude, okay. And why it exploded at this particular point in time. Now it's time to break down why bethesda hating new vegas this weird drama is nothing more than a myth a fabrication based on people with parasocial relationships with game developers making assumptions on products they have played but people they have never met before for starters i think the fallout what why would that theory require you to have a parasocial relationship with that developer Again, this sounds made up. That TV show was very clearly written by hardcore fans from all walks of the fandom, might I add. They uh, no, that's completely incorrect. Arguably, no one even knows about any Fallout lore or lore in general. Uh, anyone who says that the Fallout TV show cares about the lore? I, I want to debate you, okay? I want to talk about you about this lore that they care so much about. I, I really do. They literally put Robert House in the show, which was great to see, and he rips a line making fun of Frederick Sinclair's failure with the Sierra Madre. That, to me, is is not this surface level basic Fallout knowledge like, the nukes fell. Wait, 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 wait. So, big lord characters that you can literally Google and get a Wikipedia article about, them existing just in the show means... Did they know the lore? Are you kidding me? Is this a joke? It's a deep cut. Someone who loves New Vegas wrote that character, wrote that line, wrote that interaction. Having Frederick Sinclair in that scene at all suggests that whoever was overseeing that scene, whoever was overseeing this show, helping write it, does love New Vegas because that had to be included. How, how does that make sense that they love New Vegas? It's if it... Bro, the... Dude, if, if that's justification of someone loving New Vegas, I, I, I mean, <laughs> bro. If Bethesda, if Kilter Films wanted to wipe New Vegas off the map, they just wouldn't acknowledge it, not nuke it. And there's even more homages paid to the original Fallout games. Tim Kaine made a great video on the Fallout TV show. For those who don't know Tim Kaine, he was the original developer him. on Fallout when it was considered a, quote, B-tier project as a CRPG. He was the one doing the first few months of development on this project on his own. So, like, literally next to Brian Fargo and Leonard Boyarsky and a few others, like, the founding father. Yeah, this is the dumb argument of, oh, look at that. We have Easter eggs in the show. Look at that. The guns are pretty accurate to the original game designs. Bro, if if that... Okay, if, man, at this point, yeah, if you wear high heels, you're a woman. Yes, true. 100% true. A Fallout. And when he was watching the show, which he liked, by the way, a lot, 
he said that he saw one of the characters in the show was walking around kind of funny, like one of the villagers from the original Fallout games. Like it was one of the walk cycles. And he found the showrunner and asked about it. And the showrunner said that they had a bunch of Fallout fans on set and they said they could improv how they want to speak to the series. And so while he wasn't able to confirm, it's again showing this. So you're telling me the showrunners didn't. The, you literally just said the showrunners didn't do this. A bunch of people who were working there as extras just liked the games and then they uh, improvised. So you're literally admitting that the showrunners didn't give an F. This idea of driving love into the classics, driving love into Fallout fans in particular. Oh boy. So someone had a connection to Fallout 1 potentially or Fallout 2 and imitated. Yeah, this is, this is hardcore lying. Did that walk cycle and someone like Tim Kane would notice that. And I think that's what made the Fallout TV show special is it wasn't just the set designs. Like you'd see Todd Howard as Napoleon Bonaparte, that piece of art that we saw in Fallout 4 was in the TV show. Like it wasn't just little callbacks like that. It was little details speaking to the broad fandom there. Bro, little details in the show don't, ma don't matter. The, s the big details matter. The big stuff matters. Little details are cool and whatnot, obviously. But you know what matters? The big stuff. Easter eggs don't matter. Again, the average person doesn't know this Easter eggs. I never noticed this. I had no idea this exists. And guess what? The show is not worse or better if this is Todd Howard. Again... You, 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 you can't judge a show by the amount of Easter eggs it has. Oh, it Lord. little details speaking to the broad fandom there. And again, I think it just symbolizes that this was made by fans from all parts of the fandom, not just... No, this is lies. Every TV show does Easter eggs. It has become a cliche. You're pretty much supposed to have Easter eggs of obscure things. That doesn't mean they can't. It's just Easter eggs are a thing. Every new show that has uh, came out in the last, you know, like five to seven or ten years has had a billion Easter eggs because Easter eggs get people talking about shows. Just the Bethesda side Jeez. of things, if the setting wasn't enough to tell you that. Secondly, Emil Pagliarulo has once again reaffirmed that New Vegas is indeed canon to the Fallout universe, as if there was suddenly some sort of doubt with that. But... I also think, and I got to give him his respect here, what Jonathan Nolan said before season one of the Fallout show came out kind of freaked me out going like listening to fans isn't really worth it. Oh boy, oh boy, that's some clairvoyant, aging with grace ass comments we got there. He was totally right. And, and He's wrong. Anyone who says listening to fans is not worth it is just wrong. They're lying. They're trying to already cover up for their failures because there are multiple shows that have listened to the fans and the fans loved it. The Witcher, season one. Henry Cavill did, put a lot of effort into making it as close uh, to the source material as possible. And guess what? The fans liked it. And after that, when the, when, uh, when, when the showrunners were, no, we're doing things that way. We don't care about the source. The show went to shit. Yeah. There are so many examples of franchises being accurate to the source material, aka making the fans like it, b making a show for the fans of the uh, of the original IP, and it has worked. Saying, "Oh, we're not gonna make a show for the uh, fans," is stupid. Exactly what I said in that video, where like I was freaking out by certain things. I went, "Yeah, like when you try to appease a crazy fan, you're just gonna lose your mind because it's always gonna be something." But I want to come across complete lies. Again, it has been done so many times before successfully. Complete lies. Overly defensive, although I'm, I'm sure people have already made up their minds about that. But look, I, I look at what Bethesda has said in the past here. We're going to dig up some archives here. Not only Bethesda, but like, what has Tim Kaine said? Like, what's the relationship here? What's the feel here? What's the public vibe here based on what we know? What can we deduce here? Well, let's go back to 2022 because I think a lot of people go, well, Bethesda is extremely protective of the Fallout IP. And so the last time I saw Todd Howard really confronted with a direct okay. question of, hey, you have all these resources with Xbox, you have all these resources with In Exile, who makes great Fallout-like games in Wasteland 3. Play that game, by the way. Incredible video game. Uh, you have Obsidian in the Xbox family. Like, you have all these assets to make something pretty special for Fallout. What's the idea here? What are you going to do? And here's what Todd Howard said. You've now got an entire... Uh, Xbox family at your back and people sure. like in exile and obsidian and is there 
is there a scenario where you Pretty hand low. Fallout off? I don't see, look, Fallout's really part of our DNA here. Yeah. We've worked with other people from time to time. I can't say what's going to happen. You know, we have a one pager on, on Fallout 5, what we want to do. Again, if I could wave my hand and say, have, have <laughs> right. that out. Um, you know, I'd like to find a way to accelerate what we do. Um, but I, I can't really say today uh, or commit to anything what's going to happen when other than, hey, our cadence is Starfield and then Elder Scrolls. So a pretty non-committal, anything can happen sort of answer. And then we eventually got the announcement of the Fallout TV show. And we've seen how that turned out. Well, that's a non-committal answer. That's a, yeah, we're going to continue doing it. We don't care about others. Uh, that's a pretty spiteful answer. So it does potentially symbolize... Hey, if Bethesda does get a really good or unique pitch or things feel organic, then they'll actually go ahead and pursue that idea in whatever fandom. In fact, Todd Howard was- Yeah, sure. Again, people want to follow up New Vegas too. Obsidian offered to make one. Bethesda was no, 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 thank you. Yeah, this is clearly a lie. He's actually asked about an Elder Scrolls show by IGN and here's what he said. I don't know. I, you know, there's nothing in the works. Everybody asks like about Elder Scrolls and I keep saying no also. I would approach those, I'll probably say no. You never know if someone's gonna click, but I think this was really came out of things are aligning to do a high quality job. It wasn't forced. It was kind of a natural relationship and hey. Yeah, I don't believe that because again, this is happening after Bethesda is no longer owned by Bethesda and it's owned by Microsoft. Okay, Bethesda, like, people don't understand this. Bethesda has no choice of what, uh, what it does now. Microsoft can at any moment tell them, you're doing this. And Bethesda has to say, yes, how high do we jump? Bethesda doesn't have freedom, okay? If Microsoft tells them you're doing a show, Todd Howard can dig his e heels into the sand as much as he wants, but he has no choice but to do what is done. Otherwise, he probably actually gets sued. I'm actually not sure what happens to CEOs if their parent company says they need to do something and then they say no. They, well, obviously, they're going to get fired. And Todd Howard likes money. So he's always going to do it. But, you know, I don't even know. If they, I, can they get sued? I, I'm not sure. Well, again... Todd Howard has no say over this. Do, do not get this wrong. Microsoft says you're doing something, you're doing something. Microsoft wanted a Halo TV series. Guess what's happening A Halo TV series. So Todd Howard is most likely 100% lying because it wasn't even his choice to make this TV series. And Microsoft just said, yeah, this is happening. And that's it. Hey, this sounds really cool. As opposed to, we should have a show. So for better or for worse, they don't just do things for the sake of doing them. Does that mean they always do it well? No, I look at 76, I look at some of the design choices in Starfield, and I say no, like they don't- o Some? How about every design choice in Starfield? How about every design choice in 76? Always make the right call, no matter how considerate they are, but they are considerate. And so I don't think suddenly that they're twirling their mustache going, ooh, a Fallout TV show that we've been asked about for over a decade? Oh, yes, let- Let's go ahead and nuke New Vegas now. Like, it's finally time to get that out of the way. Especially when, as I pointed out in previous videos, like my Fallout 5 Theory video, where I think the next Bethesda Game Studios Fallout game will be set on the West Coast, I think that there are many hints across Bethesda Game Studios' own Fallout games, particularly in Fallout 4, that build off of what's happening in the Mojave. And uh, they know keeping New Vegas intact cells remember when they announced fallout first and what did they put in there the ncr ranger outfit because they know people love new vegas potentially more than any yeah again new vegas is the best game obviously anything with new vegas sells surprising i know yes anything they've ever done and they embrace that meanwhile creatives like tim kane are calling for peace and he actually told a couple of interesting stories that i'm going to splice together here in his video about his relationship with brian fargo where he remembers certain instances different compared to brian as well as things said about todd howard and emil and so listen to what tim kane founding father of fallout had to say on that the person sitting next to me brian fargo he and i talked for the entire time um, I mean, I was there. I was in there for over an hour before the premiere started, 
And let me tell you a few things. First of all, he remembers a lot of the things differently of what happened. And, but he told me that a lot of you are like harassing him and he gets a lot of like hate online. And I'm like, I, I've told people to stop that. Cut it out. He's not a villain. I'm not a hero. I'm not a villain either. Okay. Also, uh, l let's let's have a little bit of real talk. This is Fallout 1 and 2. I'm not even sure if he actually worked on 2. I'm assuming he did. But there is a cutoff between 1, 2, and 3. Okay? 1 and 2 are so retcon, so out of existence lore-wise, that almost nothing honestly matters at this point. Past, uh, past Fallout 2 and starting from 3, it's pretty much almost a separate franchise. Just real talk, okay? They, they, they try to kind of keep it, you know, the same. But Fallout 1 and 2 are completely separate things at this point from any Fallout game or whatever. Either. He's not, he's not a villain. People remember things differently. Things happen differently. Things affected people differently. We actually talked about trying to get the financial records from Interplay to figure out what was going on. Maybe mine got taxed. Maybe someone else looked. Also, I have no idea what he's talking about. This is kind of feels out of context. I have no idea what these snippets are. It. But, but I was like, but I remember talking to you. And he's like, I have no memory of talking to you. So anyway, look, if we, if we can get along, you guys can get along. So cut out all the online stuff. You guys can be really destructive, which is odd that you do it to people who are trying to make things. And it's hard enough to make things without people constantly trying to tear down. But it's way easier to tear down than build up. Saw Todd. I don't like that. He just lost respect for me, okay? Uh, this is the classic argument. Oh, how dare you call something bad? Do you have any idea how hard it was it, uh, for it to be made? So, you know, if... If you if you if you think what he said is right, then you have no you have no right to dislike this video because you have no idea how hard it was to make it. So how can you, do, dude? Dude, you know, it's it's dumb. No, 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 no. The fact that someone has made something does not abolish them from criticism. Odd and Emil, um, I think we had gone in and then come right back out, but they took a picture out in front of the the theater, um. It was fun to talk to those guys. They're really nice. And 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 also... So Honestly, also from a business perspective, I think he just wants back in the game, and that's kind of it. <laughs> I honestly think that's just it. Some of you guys... Some of your it looks like it. Line, it's... Th this just looks like your classic, oh, don't be too harsh on them, you know? Because, again, may maybe you peeked at McDonald's, maybe you're understanding things slowly, but... At the high leagues, no one no one wants to really make enemies because enemies are useless. You make enemies by your actions because pretty much all actions kind of step on the toes of other people. Just being better than someone else is already stepping on your toes. But you don't want to have, like, enemies. So this is what you do if someone asks you something. Oh, is this guy an asshole? Yeah, he's, he's kind of okay. I haven't seen what he does, you know? Uh, I have heard things, but I don't know. I haven't seen them happen. Hmm. Was pretty nice when I talked to him. You know, this. Vague shit. This is... By the way, this is my literal answer almost to anything anyone asks about a person that I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, be on the bad side of. Very easy. So off. So I kind of wish... Part of me wishes you guys could go to things like this and meet the people and not just play a game and then go off on the people. And Tim has gone on record. More no, that's stupid. If I play a game, it's bad. I, 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 I don't care about the hardships of the developers making a good game. Multiple times, and I'm not saying, like, his word is law. In fact, in that video I just referenced, he mentioned, like, don't treat me like a hero. Don't treat Brian Fargo like a villain, right? It's just all these creatives trying to work towards one thing, which is making really cool Fallout stuff at one point or another in their career. Still, Tim Kaine approving of the direction of the Fallout TV show is a really good sign, in my opinion, right? Just being there. Yeah, because he's the god of everything now. Dude, I don't care about the approval of uh, of him. Wh why should I care about his approval? He made Fallout 1 and 2. I haven't even played one of those games. And I don't even remember which one I haven't played. <laughs> Bruh. There, with the original documents, the original concepts, and seeing what it turned into, to get that thumbs up is a really good sign. And Todd Howard personally invited him, Tim Kaine said in the video, via email, 
to this event. This is where the strange parasocial level assumptions start to build because instead of just going does he even know what a parasocial uh parasocial means because i don't i don't i i don't i haven't even heard in my life like a single developer has that has been accredited to everything for a parasocial relationship to exist you must know and see and hear from the person from a uh, from a person and i and I have no idea who this magical person would be in Fallout New Vegas or any Fallout game, honestly. The only person that we know of, that I know of, is Todd Howard. And I'm definitely not having a parasocial relationship with him, even though I do admire his ability to lie about everything constantly. Oh, it's two creatives who respect one another, have worked on the same franchise. Tim Kaine's done a lot for this series. Let's invite him. We're friends. Let's just get him involved. Instead of it just being as simple as that, Occam's Razor, right? Instead, we we go to this mental gymnastics class of how New Vegas being so good and Todd being... I, I absolutely have no idea what he's on sleeve and talking. I, I completely don't understand this point. ...being so absolutely rotten on the inside, absolutely had to bring Tim Kaine in here to show him his dirty work. I think creatively, also, there's a level of respect in Fallout 4 uh, to New Vegas, not maybe in execution, but definitely in concept. They looked at what fans loved about new- The hell do you mean? Okay, so me doing this, me, me vaving, you know what that is? An homage to the glory of Lady Gaga, that's right. Couldn't tell? Well, neither could I, but trust me, bro. <laughs> An homage to- <laughs> How far, how far reaching are we at this point? Oh, oh, nothing happened, nothing was done, but it's an homage. <laughs> Bruh, come on. New Vegas and tried to build upon that. Fallout 4's finale does consist of four factions vying for the future of an area in the Fallout universe. Was it executed well? As I said earlier, no, I personally think that Fallout New Vegas had a little more variety, thus giving me more impact to my decisions and how I saw the- A little bit more variety. Now, admittedly, I'm not going to complain about Fallout 4 just yet. Again, cons co compared to everything else that has happened after Fallout 4, and again, now I'm looking at Fallout 4 as this good game because I played Starfield for four hours, and Starfield opened my eyes how absolutely, tremendously shit everything that Bethesda has done is, and that Fallout 4 actually is becoming a better game, even though it's pretty bad in a lot of respects especially the role play but man the outcome play out in the slideshow Oof. but at least hey fallout 4 let me continue my save and i truly did enjoy the institute ending a lot point being though is that's something that as a creative you look at and you go okay well let's try that since people enjoy that and that works really well for fallout so again i think there's a, a mutual creative respect there if i were to infer anything from the products i have played here's the fun part what is an actual retcon? Because that's the thing, is right now, what we're looking at are two elements of the story that are incomplete, intentionally so. And many people think that those are changes to the franchise, and it's just got- It doesn't matter if it's incomplete. If it goes against something else that has been established and rewrites its, uh, its existence, that's a retcon. It doesn't matter if the Fallout TV show is not finished. If it tells you that- things that happened in other games that we know happened for certain happen magically in a different way that's considered the retcon yeah it, the, sh the show doesn't need to be finished for you know there being obvious retcons i'm thinking now like i don't think people know what a retcon is so what are retcons in the fallout tv show it's things like vault tech being suggested to have kicked off the great war even though china apparently took the first shot the ghoul um yeah, I have heard this, but there's also a theory that uh, vault did start it. ...having a serum to prevent yes. going feral. Retcons are Mr. House... Yes, that's a retcon. Again, uh, hey, at least he mentions it. This is the first time I hear anyone who says this is great at least mention it. ...having a serum to prevent going feral. Retcons are Mr. House saying in New Vegas that nuclear... Okay, he lied again. They don't have a serum to prevent them from going feral. They they have a magical serum that needs to be constantly taken or they go feral. Which, again, adds just more questions than answers. 
if ghouls existed right there after uh, the, the bombs fell, how the hell was this serum just magically available? How, how, did that, how did that work? Did it just suddenly spring up from nowhere? Because as we, as we can understand from Vault thir uh, 33 and 32 and 31, yeah, all, all of this stuff is actually in the vaults, unironically. There's, there's no magical stuff, except where the nukes are, and no one knows that. The war was inevitable by his calculations, so he began preparing, yet he was there in the TV show when vault Tech pretty much announces that they're going to do this big nuclear war. Moving Shady... Also, yes, that's a retcon. He stands into LA is a retcon. Destroying the Strip following the events of New Vegas is not a retcon, nor is the fall of Shady Sands being in 2277. They're elements of a season one story that has yet to reach its finale. I totally respect and understand that people are like, hey... I don't, I don't know if they're retconning, honestly, if Vegas survives or whatever, because this is after the fall of Shady Sands, so, you know, uh, I don't consider this a retcon, because there can actually be a legitimate reason that, hey, uh, yeah, Vegas was thriving, uh, but after a while it died, and it can all actually make lot sense. Will that happen? Probably not, let's be real. But, you know, there is a chance. Being in 2277, there are elements of a season one story that has yet to reach its finale. I totally respect and understand that people are like, hey, the verdict's still out for me. I don't know. I'm there. I'm there. I love the show, but I'm there where I'm like, okay, let's see how they execute things. But to assume immediately that they have destroyed precious lore before the story has reached its grand finale. I mean, it's, it's clear that they have destroyed precious lore. And again, uh... If they have destroyed the lore now in season one, it doesn't matter if 10 years after when, you know, uh, the Fall of TV show ends in, you know, uh, season 10 or whatever, it's it still happened. The lore's still destroyed, okay? There, there, is, there is no argument against this. The lore is destroyed. It doesn't matter if the show is finished, near finished, or not finished. The lore is 100% completely retconned. I just think is for any creative, not just Bethesda, unfair. You know, I've dealt with this sort of strange parasocial theorizing of your motives behind- Again, I, I have- I, I don't think he knows what the word parasocial is. Parasocial would be me defending everything he says just because I like him as a content creator, okay? That's what parasocial is. I I have no idea. I don't think he knows what the word parasocial means. He's just, just using it as a buzzword here. Find any of your actions constantly online, particularly when I started defining Duke years ago. Like, I can't just enjoy a PlayStation game. Like, I'm doing it to save face because I cover Xbox-related stuff. Or if I don't like an Xbox thing, I'm trying to appease the PlayStation. It's like there's this weird other echelon of galaxy braining theorizing that goes. That's also not bad social. Goes into why even I do things. And so it's not surprising to see it's crawled into the Fallout fandom and gained so much steam. But I will say I want New Vegas fans to celebrate as much as Fallout 4 fans, as much as 3 fans. But no doubt the toxic gatekeeping that occurs just... Also, are we just putting all of the emphasis on the idea that uh, everyone who is not liking the Fallout TV show is a Fallout New Vegas fan? Bro, I literally know people who have never played New Vegas have watched the show and call it bad. Are... Are they also magically toxic Fallout New Vegas gatekeepers? I'm assuming that a lot of people who actually watch the show have not played the game because that's how shows work, you know? That's that's literally how shows work. So, the people who didn't like the show are no in, in absolutely no way some magical gatekeepers. And also, no, so dumb. This needs to go. It's needed to go for a while. And I'm glad that the TV show served as this sort of unifying point where people went like, hey, enough of this. Like enough of saying like, you can't enjoy that because that's not the true Fallout experience when each of them have very similar elements and bring a lot of different things to the table. Making it's what I never said you can't enjoy it. I questioned the intelligence of people who did enjoy it, called it a 10 out of 10 and proceeded to not even understand a single thing that happened in the show and couldn't even answer any simple questions about the show. And I still <laughs> continue to do it. What makes the series so great 
you get a different experience in Fallout 1 and 2 versus 3 versus Brotherhood of Steel versus 4 versus 76 versus But what if that experience is bad should we just be happy that it exists even though it's bad? It's New Vegas. You get a completely different experience every time around and that's why I keep coming back to these games because they always are the gift that keeps on giving. So that concludes my argument. I also they're pretty much the same experience honestly with a different coat of paint. It's the same principle, it's almost the same things happening, it's a very predictable formula. I just want to say something on like, a, I guess a personal level, if you will, so like, you can just draw a line in your head right now, like, Maddie argument done, you can go ahead and leave your comments, hate me if you will. I just wanted to conclude this video on, if you will, like a personal note, which is, I saw this clip of IGN giving Fallout a 9 out of 10 and telling Todd on the red carpet that that's what was happening, and I thought his reaction was, like, really sincere. Like, it was an absolute thanks. pleasure, thank you. Yeah, this is the same as... Okay, I haven't checked what's happening with the Fallout TV show, uh, show reviews now, but I did check instantaneously when it just got released, and Rotten Tomatoes was 90% positive uh, viewer score on Fallout New Vegas, but I, I, che I checked the reviews... And 9 out of 10 reviews who commented, yeah, this is great, had only one show and it was Fallout, uh, to, uh, the, the Fallout TV show. That was the only show that they ever watched. <laughs> and obviously, by the way, if you did not know, uh, Amazon owns Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes does literally everything that Amazon tells them to do. And Amazon has already been caught making numbers seem way better than they are for other of their TV shows that they, you know, wanted to be big successes and things. So, yeah. Kind of interesting. Thank you so much. Yo, yeah. Are you really giving it a 9? Yes. That's, yeah, that's what he told me. Yeah, yeah. He's probably pissed that it wasn't a 10. Because, again, also, remember how Bethesda works. Uh, if you ever want to review anything Bethesda-related... Uh, unless you have given them in the past a 9 or a 10 on whatever they made, you're not getting the code, you're not getting the early viewership, you're not getting anything, okay? You're going to be sitting there and not doing it. It's it's the same thing as Starfield. Everyone rated it a 9 or 10 out of 10. Why? Because the people who were critical of their previous works never received review copies. Same thing here, obviously. It's like, they're like, this is like up there, best video game adaptations, like, it's so exciting. Awesome. I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Very excited. Well, at the end, it is a 5 out of 10. A 5 out of 10 on the better side of things, I guess. But still a 5, uh, five out of 10. Anyway, that was Mr. Matty Plays. He plays the shill, boys. It is what it is. Anyway, this was Kuzar Sensen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. I'm Dalton. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.